but also be aware of where they are and and be aware of your own story and and how that's coming across. It seems really hard. <laughs> and it, it sounds like an overwhelming challenge, right? Hey, I've been working on this stuff for over five years now. <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen like magic. Don't feel bad about it. I mean, I think one of the things you're going to be hearing about from Chris at the end is an opportunity for ongoing chances to work together talking about these things. One of the great things is to be able to share your share your occurrences with each other. We're going to be doing some role playing in a little while and say, boy, I talked to my aunt and it was just awful. Well, what did she say? And then somebody else will say, well, let me see, there was that stages of change thing. Where do you think your aunt was? Oh God, she was in pre-contemplation, I can tell it. Um, and somebody may say, well, you know, I talked to somebody like that, and this happened. Maybe. And you sort of think, well, maybe the next time I'll remember it. I mean, you may have to hear it ten times before it starts occurring to you spontaneously. You may think about one story that you hear. I'm, like, it could have been the reaction, reaction of one person that was something you stuck out in your mind, and you practice now. How would I say it? How would I talk about how that teacher gave me this total glower and more or less said you're going to fail the class because you just even looked like you could be gay? I mean, I don't even know what you are, but you just look like it, and I know you're one of them. And, and you think, oh my God, I blew it. My whole career is ruined. Um, and I realized I'm going to be picked on my whole life. And, you know, if you can tell that in a story and find your way to tell that again, I mean, you get so you, eventually you get to have, you might have to have a couple for yourself, one little anecdote, or it could be something that happened to somebody else that you saw, or something you read about, and you kind of get that so you can use it comfortably in conversation. You get it down kind of small, but pick the ones that are going to have some emotional impact that people will be able to identify with. They'll say, I can remember seeing something like that. I can remember having that feeling, that poor person. Gee, what a great thing, you know, preparing for a wedding or something like that. I mean, whatever it is, the, the stories are a great way to bring out the emotional kinds of things for people. And you don't have to, to do it alone. I mean, you got friends here, right? Yeah. I was at a three-hour yoga workshop this morning. I could you speak a little louder? I was at a three-hour yoga workshop in a, a large living room with theater furniture with 22 people mat to mat to me. And at the end of it, I, knowing that I knew some of the people in there but not everybody, I said I've had a difficult ethical problem lately. And it, I discovered that my doctor, of whom I was very fond, and who is an excellent doctor for me, had given $5,000 to Yes on Eight. And I said I had a I had to write to my doctor a very careful letter thanking her for her care and skill, but saying that I could no longer be her patient because some of the money I give to her was going to something I considered to be immoral and unethical, and therefore I was very sorry. And as I was telling the people, I took the opportunity to tell these people because it made them think about the issue. <laughs> And it's amazing, so many people said, well, of course, well, good for you. And others, I could see, really just sort of thought about it. And sort of, mm -hmm. But I think you have to live. When you strongly believe in something, like I used, I was still working against the death penalty, you have to live it every day. You have to live who you are and what you believe in. And I, I take the opportunity to just raise the issue sometimes of having gay friends or gay son or, um, or the things I believe in. Mm -hmm. Just talk, leave an open mind so that you don't have to bring, you don't have to steal yourself. Now it's easy for me because it's easy for me to talk to people and I know that other people may find it more difficult. But I do think that if you can live what you believe, you can get through to people. And I also won an argument with somebody and made an enemy for life. Made an enemy for life? Yes, because over the death penalty actually years ago, I won the argument and I could tell she would 
never change your mind. And I will add that to the end. Good, good story. And uh, in terms of, of living what you believe in, though, I think that you have to honor that not everybody is finds it as easy to talk. Not everybody is an extrovert. I mean, you may feel inhibited sometimes. You may feel shy. You may feel like I don't quite have a right case, or I'm just I'm so bloody tired today. I can't deal with this right now. That's okay. I mean, you don't have to be on the field all the time. If you can do it once in a while, it's okay. Give you know, it's like give yourself permission. Be nice to yourself in this whole thing too. Um, let me see where we where we are in terms of our schedule here. Yeah, keep moving along on this stuff. And we are a little after three o'clock, which says um, we could we could have done some little demonstration role plays. I think we've had enough conversations here that have begun to think about how it's happening, so that we won't have to do that. So what I'd like you to do is take a short break now for um, about fifteen minutes. And then come hustling back in here. I think you'd probably get maybe something to nibble and eat and have a drink of water or something, use a facility. Come back in here. I'd like to see you back by uh, aim for, aim for 